All right, guys, today we're going to do a video that I think will be fitting more so to my future. But anyways, we're going to talk about my top five city slash urban EDC knives. And in this video, too, I think we'll also kind of help explain why some of these knives are perennial bestsellers or, you know, really well-established knives in the EDC community. Because I would say, by and large, most people that run EDC loadouts, setups, are kind of knife nuts if you will, do generally live in some form of a city, around cities, and, you know, or at least large um, populations or urban environments. So in those kinds of capacities, you know, having something like a Cold Steel 4 Max Scout doesn't necessarily make sense. Now, if you are someone who goes into the field often, maybe a wildlife biologist or something like that, you know, having something like a 4 Max Scout or a more heavy-duty, robust, overbuilt knife does make more sense for that type of environment. But if most of what you're doing is like around an office environment, having these types of knives does tend to make more sense. So first off, we're not really going to go in any order here because I think they're all pretty much equal. But the first one up has to be something like the Spyderco Smock. And I think that I'm definitely placing a lot of emphasis in this video with very streamlined, slim knives. And when you look at the Smock closed, you guys can definitely tell that like this is a knife that is prioritized in being a very slim package. And so once again, the smock is a really good representation of this. It also, within reason, I would say that most of these knives will look pretty unassuming. Now, obviously, to the right person, everything will be scary. So, you know, I'm not going to say as a hard and fast rule that this knife doesn't look scary. It sure as heck doesn't look scary to me. But then again, I also really don't think any knife looks particularly scary. Some might, you know, look a little bit more um, crazy or wacky. But anyways, this is a pretty mundane knife and once again very slim very um, EDC friendly, very pocket friendly. And ultimately I think it kind of bridges the gap between something more robust, but also something kind of slimline like a CEO knife. Um, obviously this is thicker, heavier, you know, a little bit larger than something like a proper CRKT CEO, but this is also tends to be where like I find my preference more. I like something that's a good compromise between, you know, those thicker industrious knives, but also streamlined and easy easy to carry. Now, moving on to the next one, and obviously basically has to be on the list if the smock is there, and that is the True Benchmade 940. Um, now, like I said, True, I mean truthfully, um, more like the aluminum handled version. The CF and G10 versions are okay. I definitely have a preference towards the um, aluminum scaled version of this knife, but once again, the smock is here. I think the 940 has to be here as well. Also, too, because I think like this is what really makes the 940 um, a go-to knife for so many people. Like, obviously, the 940 is a reasonably old design like this is not a new um blade by any means or by any stretch of the imagination uh, i believe this thing even predates things like the benchmade griptilian but um if memory serves correctly but at the same time too the reason why the 940 is a perennial favorite with most edc people is because one it's super thin super compact like you can see like there's not many knives that will fit in your pocket this well because because it's so thin, it's so narrow. And then when you open up that blade, it's a very pencil-like blade that's very thin, very narrow. Obviously mine has seen some use and abuse, so it's a little bit different, a little bit more used, but uh, either way, like the Benchmade 940 already has a very thin or very narrow um, blade to it. And so once again, that makes it very useful for doing a lot of um, just around like box opening, you know, just general purpose, like kind of utility knife such stuff. So that's what makes this knife quite a bit than something like maybe a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. The Paramilitary 2 is a fantastic knife in and of itself. It's a little bit wider, it's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit bigger overall in profile. So something with the 940 just ends up being more attractive to the average consumer because of that. In addition to, this tip is still a little bit more robust because it is kind of like a reverse Tonto. So while I certainly wouldn't recommend prying on it, if you did have to pry or put some lateral uh, tension on it, it can take it for sure sure. So the 940 definitely has to be on the list. At least it's a perennial favorite in the EDC and even not super knife enthusiast people because it just works very well. All right, next one up is going to be the Hogue Decca. Now the Hogue Decca is basically the contender or rival to the Benchmade Bugout and 
Because of that reason, I didn't feel like throwing the bug out on this list. The DECA basically is the bug out. If you have a bug out, you can basically substitute it with this. Like this could be the, the uh, bug out uh, on this list. But anyways, once again, it has to be on here because as far as Urban EDC goes, I don't think that, you know, you get much better than a super thin, super lightweight, super just well-built knife for the express tasks of acting like a box cutter. I mean, I think for most general users, utility, package opening, box cutting, letter opening, kind of tasks, even, you know, like uh, just general purpose cardboard processing kind of stuff. This is going to be where it is at. And the DECA is just a really good knife at doing those types of tasks. Once again, it's not necessarily, you know, going to excel at any one particular task but it's just a good all-around knife. Now, I will say I do prefer the um, Warncliffe version of this blade shape over something like the Bug Out's more traditional drop point. If we're talking about, once again, box cutter-like tasks, this um, shape for the blade is already leaning or lending its hand to that task. And you'll kind of see a kind of common trend here where I'm leaning towards more reverse Tontos slash um, Warncliffs in this um, list because once again for utility as I've talked about in other videos Warncliffs tend to be more desirable for that and as other people as other YouTubers have talked about you know once again when it comes down to utility it's very easy to choke up on a Warncliffe and if you have to make precise cuts like say you're cutting you know on a piece of paper you're trying to make like exact precise cuts like down a straight line um, once again a Warncliffe is going to do those things not necessarily easier but more intuitively because because the tip is going to be pointed downward, so it makes it far easier to choke up on that tip and direct that tip to where you want. So if like you're trying to cut alongside a ruler per se to get a perfectly straight cut, you know, doing that type of task is going to be much easier with these types of knives. So you will see basically all of these knives are either reverse Tonto or Warncliffe designs. Which leads us to the next knife, which is a proper Warncliffe here. It is not a sheep's foot, kind of looks like it, but this one's definitely a Warncliffe. And so this is the American Blade Works or ABW Model 1. This is the Warncliffe version of the Model 1. They do make standard uh, tipped, like drop point tips as well. But this one is the Warncliffe and uh, there's not too much to say about it. It's just an awesome knife. It does work very well. Once again, as well established by the other knives on this list, that Warncliffe really comes in handy for, you know, more urban EDC types of applications and environments um, because it allows you to have more of a natural or intuitive control over that very blade shape. I mean, like when it comes to like cutting out, like shipping labels and stuff out of a piece of paper, you can do it very well with a knife like this. In fact, I have done it quite a few times with this guy just because it works well, it feels intuitive and natural. And so, yeah, and once again, too, with the ABW Model 1, you know, you're seeing very similar, um, you know, like size ranges in here of about like just over around three and a quarter inches for blade length. So very similar to something like the Smock, you know, I will say about the only real difference between the ABW and the other knives on this list is it does have a little bit wider profile, especially when closed because of how the Warncliffe kind of juts out here. So it isn't as natural. Natural, um, naturally sitting in like the closed profile, but it's still plenty pocket friendly and once again, not that heavy. All right, last one up on the list is going to be the Chris Reeve Knives um, Sabenza. Now, ironically, if I had the Insingo grind, I would have so thrown that on here just because the Insingo grind is kind of like Chris Reeve's like specialized version of a Warncliffe slash sheep's foot. Like it's their own kind of amalgamation. So that probably would have fit very well because everything else here is either a reverse Tonto or a uh, Warncliffe but I have the normal Tonto version of the Sabenza. You can just imagine it's an Insingo grind if you want, but either way, I mean, this does work pretty well, and I will say as far as Tontos go, they do kind of give you some, some degree of similarity to the reverse Tonto or to the uh, Warncliffe because you do get pretty natural and intuitive control over the tip. The only difference is the tip is at the top as opposed to at the bottom of the end of the blade. So a little bit harder to control, or at least if you were to cut in line, you'd have to, you know, um, put your angle, your wrist a little bit further down to get those exact or precise cuts.
Anyways, as far as it goes, once again, staying kind of true to the design, the Sebenza is a very slim knife. It's a very, um, not super thin knife, but definitely not the thickest in Chris Reeves' lineup. So, you know, you are seeing, obviously, this Hogue Deca is thinner because it's a thinner knife, but you can see that it is fairly thin and that it is very pocket-friendly. Once again, all these knives really are pocket-friendly. I think that's what makes a really good urban EDC knife. It's something that you can throw in your pocket. It will blend in well. It won't really scream like, hey, I'm a knife. Um, you know, it's just going to be a really useful blade for general utility purposes. So anywho, that's my look at Urban EDC blades and what I think would be really good for just general purpose utility uh, knives in an urban environment because I feel like that's where most of the time most of us EDC guys find ourselves is, you know, not out in the back 40 doing cool adventures, which once again, I have specialized knives for that too. But, you know, realistically speaking, this is what we end up using our knives on most of the time. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.